we will find out for sure. This was um, this was for DAPS builders, and the way that they put this out there, right? They're saying, hey, we can work with any of these chains. Again, Polygon, Avalanche, Ethereum. Didn't we just see Avalanche was also being invested in by? You're robbing me. If you make it to this point in the video and you have not hit the like button, you're robbing me. <laughs> Ethereum poke poke. You're robbing me. You're robbing me. Solana, Cosmos, Binance Chain. Just to name a few. You're robbing me. This is crazy. This project is plugged. And I mean plugged. Like, forget about it. Part of the team is currently in Kyoto at IVS Official for three days of Web3 conferences. Stay tuned for more exciting news. Okay. Uh, we're not going to be able to read that. At least I'm not. If I got somebody who could read that fluently, please holla out. So this is a recap of the major topics discussed during the AMA with KuCoin, right? A lot of, I have not, uh, I'm going to be honest, I have not listened to that full AMA, but I will go back and, and finish that. But KuCoin, right? KuCoin also in the news right now. KuCoin has said that, oh, and by the way, if you use KuCoin, remember they will not accept any more deposits if you uh, don't have your KYC completed by July 15th, I believe. So if you use KuCoin, make sure you get that uh, get that KYC done. Personally, I'm just going to try to see if I can. I got KYC to too many freaking exchanges. So I'm just going to try to see if I can get at what I need to get at um, through other means. A left, by the way, is available on Coinbase. How does a left plan to further develop its footprint in the gaming industry ubisoft they got ubisoft they gun, they're gonna get in they're gonna get in also are there any upcoming projects you can share um this is the lead for aleph or aleph as he pronounces it we are focusing on several aspects one of which is confidential vms virtual machines these are instances where the memory is encrypted, I think, uh, preventing anyone from seeing what is happening inside. This so protecting, right, protecting that NFT. This feature will assist VMs in writing on chain as they can maintain private keys. It will also facilitate instantaneous off-chain to on-chain updates. Think about this in the gaming space, right? on chain if, if you play offline and then you go play online there has to be something that um, carries over that data so this is an, it's an accurate right consistent representation of, of, of what you've done right that's the simplest way I can the absolute simplest way I can put that um, in other words it enables changing an NFT on chain if an event occurs in game or vice versa another aspect is chain compatibility that's literally what I just said. We plan <laughs> we plan to expand to newer chains where major studios are developing new games. Stay tuned for more on this. It's happening soon. They out here cooking. They out here cooking. This is a recap. Hey, let's finish these, man. We got time for seven tweets. Where we at? We got time for seven tweets. We can get through the rest of these tweets. Aleph has been involved on a decentralized conversation, uh, conversational chatbot. Could you share more about the project, its design, and goals? To begin with, let's quickly recap that Aleph IM is... Okay, so it looks like they just... He pasted the definition in here, basically. I'll go through it in case people haven't heard it, but it's a little technical. Um, LFIM is a decentralized cloud comparable to AWS, but with decentralization, right? So saying, hey, we are a hosting solution as well. It offers storage solutions as file storage 
and databases as well as computing services akin to VPS, VMs, and on-demand solutions like Lambda. Now, moving to the AI segment, the Liberti.io project aims to deploy large language models on this decentralized cloud, drawing parallels with ChatGPT and OpenAI APIs. So, hey, a very short pullout definition of that, Liberti or Liberté, however you pronounce it, .io, right? Aiming to do things similar to ChatGPT and OpenAI. However, it is decentralized, circumventing privacy concerns, censorship, or centralized limitations. Aleph IM's Elastic Decentralized Computing enables it to scale on demand. This system is built on the Aleph IM and IPFS platforms. Essentially, when, ask, when a question is asked, a VM is initiated. The VM then loads the model from IPFS bringing up the context and begins streaming the answer so i read that one just to read it but that was a that he broke it down the best way he could but that's still a very technical definition so it's gonna go over a lot of folks heads i don't even i didn't even understand all of it if i'm being completely honest with you so i don't expect everybody to um <clears throat> alfim has worked with various blockchain networks including tezos we know that uh tezos let's call it back uh the rabbits project i want to say no 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 um the the other ubisoft get up uh the ubisoft uh what was the shooter the shooter game with the weapon nfts um shoot why is it escaping me let's just look it up um dang it they built it was like a whole platform for it and i did a video on it i am slow right now uh we're not gonna mess around with bing tonight just waste time using bing uh what was it called ub uh ubisoft quartz ubisoft bingo Is the site down? Oh, it was just loading and then I clicked something maybe. Yeah, I have to check the scripts on this page. My goodness, what's up? Let's see if we can find another way into it. All right, well, we got a trailer right here. Let's do this. If at first you don't succeed, try to load that so you don't get a double feedback. Their name is Digits. There we go. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Now, actually, pause right there for the Ghost Recon is not just like a, it's not a super small title. It's one of the, now, it's not like, it's not beating Call of Duty in popularity, right? But Ghost Recon has been around since like PS2 days, if I remember right. It's, Ghost Recon has been around for quite some time. Uh, so it's not like a, an unheard of title. So they did launch it on at least a fairly known title. These are the NFTs, digits, they call digits on the Quartz platform. Limited edition, right, MF, uh, NFTs, only a few, only a certain amount minted. They remember their owner's names, pause, right? So this is some of the work that Aleph was working on, right? These. These, chain, these uh, NFTs can maintain their history. It can tell you who owned them at what time. You can see right here in this video, we got 1-11-2022. Um, 1-17-2022. So this is an NFT that has moved between owners, right? 
this uh this person owned it first this person owned it next then it went to this person or then it went to this person and then and then this person uh maybe they're just using this as an example because those dates are not 14 17 i don't know i might be missing something there but anyway the dates are showing you at what time it was owned by, by each different person and then the original release date right so one or uh, seven one twenty twenty two. So let's keep going. All right, so. That was a course platform. We looked at that in, uh, oh, that was Crypto Under Focus. Um, that was the video I did with, uh, with Underdog. Uh, crypto Under Focus, that was a live stream we did and we talked about this course platform. So, and then I also did a follow-up video with Aleph Research where we talked about that. Now again, remember Ubisoft, right, is listed as a partner for Aleph, right? We seeing things mesh. When things mesh, that's good, right? We're just we're just shoring up this start, right? I'm not a financial advisor. I can't give you financial advice. But I can let you know what I'm finna do. <laughs> and we are shoring we are shoring up this investment right now. We diving in, we looking who is backed by, we checking out the partners, right? We making sure that it's not just something that's being thrown around. We can in each thing, and this is what I'm liking because I'm, these are just tweets, but even in their tweets, we can find consistency, right? We can go back and find that they are literally, right, practicing what they preaching, so to speak, right? They're telling you, hey, look, we doing this. And then you can check their website and see that they really doing it. They really about that. <laughs> oh, man, let's see. Um, where else we at in here? Uh, where are uh, three four and five let's see that's one here we go so what benefits and challenges do you foresee in the decentralization of ai particularly conversational ai oh good one let's see ai is a significant subject for humanity okay leaving it centralized in the hands of a few large corporations possess a great danger far exceeding any romanticized risks associated with AGIs AGIs or oh any associate okay any romanticized risks associated with AGIs right so basically what he's saying right here in this first part is look AGI is a pretty big deal right and not allowing it to be decentralized and leaving it in the hands of a few is gonna make the movies <laughs> is gonna make the movies look like nothing right any romanticized risk anything that you fantasize about a, the risk of a central authority controlling all the ai and technology they're saying anything that you've thought of if we don't get this thing decentralized it's gonna be worse <laughs> um <clears throat> AGIs or artificial general intelligences are the type of AI portrayed in movies being vastly more intelligent than humans. However, these are still far off. But AI, particularly LLMs, large language models, right, will soon become an integral part of our daily lives. We also saw, uh, I believe it was Rare Stone, right? Rare Stone was also saying some of the same stuff. Like, hey, look, this Web3 stuff is a pretty big deal. Would you want your life to be controlled by open AI? No. And he says, I wouldn't either. <laughs> every question you pose and everything asked by any company using their API is directed to the company providing the compute and model. This is why we fully support initiatives like Liberty. Moreover, it's far more efficient in terms of cost and environmental impact 
to operate in a decentralized manner than to rely on highly centralized GPU farms, which raise significant concerns across various aspects. So again, basically saying, look, look not only is it um, not only is it a risk to have these uh, this tech controlled by a, a, a single entity from just a people and humanity standpoint, but also from an environmental aspect it's maybe not the greatest idea uh, what do we have here question number three talking about other sorts can you elaborate on a partnership between the left I am and Ubisoft and what makes this collaboration unique let's get it let's get it y'all know I'm y'all know I'm a gamer right shout out to focus gaming by the way so this Ubis the Ubisoft portion of this project is super interesting to me, like super interesting. Because as a gamer, I can see the use case. If they're, if they're going to implement these NFTs, I better be able to take it with me. We were part of the Ubisoft Entrepreneurs Labs incubation program back in 2021. During this period, we established numerous areas of collaboration and maintained close ties with the exceptional team at Ubisoft. Our collaboration continues on new projects, details of which I cannot divulge at this point. However, one public project worth noting is Ubisoft Quartz. In this project, in-game items for Ghost Recon Breakpoint are represented as NFTs. This development thrills me as it expands the use case of a left IM in the gaming industry. Come on now. Now, I've I've been saying it. Now you just heard it from the lead uh from the lead of this project. I butcher his name every time, so that's why I'm not saying it. I don't know how to say it. Is it Mosh or Mosh? Probably Mosh. I would I would We're going to find out cuz I'm going to tune into the future of friends. We're going to find out. Um Let's let's keep rolling. Question number four. We probably gonna kill it at the end of these questions here. How does a left IM's decentralized cloud services help reshape the gaming industry? Specifically, how does it enhance the gaming experience in Ubisoft's games? Another question. Let's keep going. I like these questions. Come on, Cool Coin. Y'all asking the right ones. <laughs> I don't like the child trying to make me KYC, but y'all asking the right questions. Let's use Ubisoft Quartz as an example. While the ownership was on Tezos, so this is, oh, oh, I love this, I love this. I was looking for an explanation of their relationship um, in that project with Tezos, and now we about to get it, it seems. While the ownership was on Tezos, one of the multiple blockchains supported by Left IM which supports all EVM chains like ETH, Polygon, BNB, and more. He just, just doing, I told you, this project got swag, man. I told you they got swag, man. <laughs> He's like, look, by the way, we also got, we also got functionality with these other chains. <laughs> as well as Tezos, Cosmos, and Polkadot, right? NFT metadata are dynamic and served by Aleph IM storage solution then um or uh server right server or storage solution however you want to define that in your own words this means they can change based off based on off-chain events oh when they're on a different chain they are handled by a left im's decentralized computing and storage ensuring decentralization and reproducibility this is especially interesting as it allows traditional games to offer evolving items excuse me while keeping storage and metadata decentralized there are also ongoing projects with them involving embedding a left tokens inside nfts so that when you mint the nft you pay for the storage and computing and it's preserved forever what other my goodness y'all every all this stuff comes back to a loop 
when we did crypto under focus what was i telling y'all what was i literally saying was one of the best things about that ghost market nft minting tech that i saw and with those nf uh those indigo saint nfts which i do still have and i'm gonna start a burn party here in a minute but um <laughs> but what was i telling y'all in that in that video i said you can take an underdog said it too he said you can use this nft like a little bank and you can start throwing uh you can start throwing different cryptos in the nft so now you can bro this tech is next level i'm trying to tell you let's get on to let's see question number five What are the key challenges and opportunities you see in the intersection of decentralization and gaming? Okay, what are the problems and what are the opportunities? There's one area that hasn't really been covered thus far and I consider it quite essential. The principle of everyone can pay. The idea is that on the left I am, anyone can pay for the storage or computing of a specific item why is this relevant well imagine a game studio stating a few years after a game's release listen the game is old now we are shutting down the servers our goal is to also provide computing for game backends if the back end is on a left IM, the players themselves can cover the computing costs and keep the game running. I believe this is one of the key aspects of this intersection to be. Oh my goodness! Do y'all know? Oh my, bro, y'all robbing. YouTube is robbing me, bro. YouTube is robbing. Me. This is fire. This is fire. So let me take y'all to the gaming realm real quick. Let me just take you into the gaming world and talk about right this little back end that he's talking about. I'm gonna use a real world example, something that was annoying to me. So a while ago, there was uh, a couple years back, there was a game, right? Uh, it was like, it was one of the hero games that involved like Captain America uh, and Black Panther. Like the, it was a Marvel game. It was called like, marvel online or something of that nature but that game released and then the rights to a lot of those characters likeness or maybe the characters as a whole it ended up getting sold to disney and so the folks who had that game no longer had the rights to uh to those characters and so i it was and basically to sum it up, uh, we can go back and read the facts on it, but I want to say Disney just said, "Eh, we don't like it. We're shut. We're gonna. Y'all can't use that game no more. Shut it down." And so everybody had been in anybody who had bought stuff in that game, and you know invested any time into that game, you were screwed because the folks said, "Nope, we shutting it down." This now maybe laws and things will come into effect to say that they can't use. Um, their tech in a certain way but if this stays on the side of the people what could have happened right is if this game was built on the left back end then the players can deposit the funds to keep it running without worrying about somebody else coming and shutting it down saying you can't play it no more you can deposit the funds needed to run that game and play it that's YouTube is robbing me out here. That's why I'm making a Patreon. I hope I can move the Patreon completely. Anyway, uh, <laughs> since I'm still on it, let me quit talking. Um, and I think this is the last one right here. Uh, six out of seven. Yeah, we read seven. How does a left I am plan to further develop its footprint in the gaming industry? Also, are there any upcoming projects you can share? Yeah, I feel like we read that already. Yeah, we read that one already. Um, so did we read seven? 
LFIM has worked with various blockchain networks, including Tezo, Solana, and BNB Chain. Can you share insights on how these partnerships have evolved and their impact on LFIM's ecosystem? Sorry if the water bothers y'all, but literally on the thumbnail, I got a glass of ice water there because I usually drink water. Because when you talk and you say this many words like I do, you dry out pretty quick. <clears throat> You're welcome to join me. Cheers. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so again, talking about their... Uh, asking about insights on how these partnerships have evolved, right? Their partnerships with these different chains. From NFTs to DeFi, via reverse oracles, indexers, computing, and many other subjects, technical stuff, <laughs> the use cases on each chain tend to be different. We've initially provided a framework for users to create their own indexer on Solana. And now we've extended, excuse me, we've extended this service to EVM chains and Tezos. We offer computing on all these chains and others, including Polkadot and Cosmos. On Tezos, we primarily worked on NFT related projects, while on Ethereum, we focused mainly on DeFi. Huh? Who knew a left was in DeFi? I didn't. These various focuses have shaped our ecosystem and community. Actually, I do, I lied. Attracting participants from all these different sectors, including developers. I should have known that because guess what? Request finance for 1,000. Huh? Come on, y'all. What? What? If I wake up tomorrow and this, and this live stream don't have 10 likes, y'all are robbing me. that music still fresh